Come on, will you stand up this morning? Hope you came with an expectancy for what the Lord wants to do in this house this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody awake? Everybody ready to worship? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Brother Robert's going to sing a special, then we're going to go into worship. Just be attentive to the presence of the Lord because that's what we're here for. Amen. Lord, it's good to know Let me tell you about my Jesus. 
His love is strong and His grace is free. The good news is I know He will do for you what He's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. cross to Calvary, pray the price for all my guilty, who we care that much about me, let me tell you about my Jesus, he makes a way where there ain't no way, rises up from an empty grave, ain't no sinner that he can't save, let me tell you about my Jesus, he's the love strong and his grace is free. Good news is I know he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Sing it again. Makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He's strong and his grace is free. Good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Sing that again. Come on. He can change your life this morning. Turn it around. Amen. Jesus is the only one who can truly change your life around and make you new. Amen. Whew. Uh, good morning, Way of Life Worship Center. I'm glad to see everybody here. If you're watching by Facebook or YouTube, we're glad that you are participating in a way that you're able to. Um, just ask that if, you, if you're able, we'd love for you to come and visit and be a part of our, our physical body here. Uh, we're glad that you can be a, body, a part of the body and spirit as you're able. Amen. So looking forward, don't forget our uh, Wednesday night services that we always have. Uh, we break the, the physical bread at 615 and uh, then we have some. Uh, some worship, and we'll break into eight separated classes at 7, uh, Tuesday prayer at 10 a.m. if you got some time. Uh, make sure you keep our teens in prayer as they're leaving June 17th at 8 a.m. So that wasn't, that's, that's just a reminder to all of our parents of teens. If you know somebody who's got a teen who's going and aren't here, make sure you remind them. That's June 17th at 8 in the morning, okay? If they're not here, make sure that they know it. And also, we need to make sure if, that all of the forms are in for both teen camp and for kids camp. That's for teen camp and for kids camp. We have to have all the forms in by the same date. Uh, that's at the camp's request so that they've got everything set, set up and they're ready to roll. Um, April 20th, that's next Saturday at 2 p.m. The ladies' paint party is going to be going on back here in the fellowship hall. Make sure if you are going to participate or you know somebody who, who's going to participate that you talk to Shannon or catch me and make sure that we can get up to Shannon so that you can pick a, a pattern to paint um, and make sure that we collect the money for that so that we can buy all the supplies and make sure everybody, everything's all set up for that. So if you're going or you know somebody who's going, make sure you catch Shannon and make arrangements with that, okay? That's next Saturday at 2 p.m. Um, April 21st, we've got Purpose that will be visiting. That's a morning and an evening service. The evening service will be at 6 p.m. Uh, April 28th, uh, that's a couple Sundays from now, we're having a baptismal service. We've got one that's already set up to be baptized. If you need to be baptized, 
Um, make sure that you get a hold of Scotty or me or one of one of the leadership here uh, to make sure that we get you in and we're prepared for that. Um, you know, and not to say that if you showed up that Sunday and the Lord convicted you that you needed to, to go through the waters of baptism again, that we would stop you then either. But we'd love to be prepared for you and to talk to you a little bit before that happens. Amen. Uh, and May the 19th, Kevin White will be visiting with us. So keep that on your calendar. And June 12th to 14th is, the VB, is our VBS in the evening, The Great Jungle Journey. More information is, is going to follow on that as well. Amen. All right. I think that's all the announcements and we can get back into worship. Um, I know we had a good report. Let me see if I can pull it up. We had a good report from the prison ministry that we that we uh, partner with from. Uh, let's see. Where is that? Sorry. I'm just going to scroll for a second and see if I can find the picture I took of that document that Brother David gave me. It's going to be a little awkward, so just bear with me for a second. But it's important that we know what, there it is, what our outreach is doing. We were, 744 inmates were preached to, uh, 1,050 pieces of literature, tracts, Bibles, or Sunday school books were distributed in the prison ministry. 12 people were saved. Amen. And nine people were rededicated their life to the Lord also. So these are these are men who have obviously reached their lowest point. They've found out that if, when it's between them and God, that's all that they have. And they've reached out to find the new life that the Lord's offered them. Amen. So there was angels celebrating every time that they were that that they uh, made the correct choice. Amen. Well, let's let's all stand back up. We'll bless our offering and the rest of our service, and we'll get back into good worship. Amen. And this is, this is no less worship than the words that we sing, you know, the tithe that the Lord lays, that the Lord asks for, the 10% that he says, if you give this to me, I'll bless your socks off. That's not a quote from the Bible, that's a paraphrase, so nobody thinks that I'm being sacrilegious, but he says, look, if you give this to me, I can bless the other 90% and it'll go farther than you thought was possible, but if you don't give me this 10%, I can't do anything. That's how, that's how a contract works like that. God says, if you will, then I'll do. If you don't, then I can't. And then we're left on our own. And let me tell you something. If you're left on your own, that's all we got. And we, we're going to crumble and fall. And the Lord says that it will blow away. That is not what I want for my money. That's not what I want for yours. I encourage you, test the Lord. He says, test me. See if I won't just dump out, open the windows of heaven and dump a blessing on you. So let's, let's bless the tithe and the offering that the Lord lays on our heart that's above that. If he lays a, an amount on your heart, be honest with yourself and be honest with God and give the amount he tells you to. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this good day. Lord, we thank you for the blessing that you've provided to us. The place of blessing and, and um, plenty that you've put us in, Father, in the United States and in this facility, God, that's air-conditioned and dry, Lord. We ask that you would... Bless the things that we do here as the church, Lord, as the called out people of God. We ask, Lord, that you would be in this service, Father God, that you would that you would flow through it, Father, that you would cause things to happen here that are according to your will. And Lord, all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
Somebody lift your praises. If we're not careful here, we'll have church this morning. Hallelujah. Ain't that what it's all about, being in his presence. Amen. 
Come on, continue to let the presence of the Lord that's here this morning move in your spirit. Let him move in your heart. We pray this morning that, Lord, you will burn out anything that hinders us from your wonderful, beautiful presence that we came here for in the first place. Help us, Lord, to put everything else out of our minds for this period of time in this service. Let us just give you everything we have, all of our worship, all of our praise. Help our minds to be focused and fixed upon you as we go into a time of worship. We just want to tell you we honor you and we love you, Jesus. And we are here for you, Lord.
trying to make something happen right here at this point, but if you have a need this morning, you want to come to the front and pray while we're worshiping on this last song, feel free to do that, or if you just want to cry at the altar or worship.
God in you, sing it out. Father, we praise you in this house this morning. We love you and we thank you for your presence that is already here. Your presence that has met us at the door today, God. We love you and we welcome you in this house. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you today for loving us beyond our failures, beyond our faults, beyond our slip-ups, beyond everything that is in our flesh. Thank you for loving us through the blood of Jesus Christ today. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your name. Come on, bring the music down and let's sing it together one more time. Sing it. Sing you are the Lord, the famous one, famous one. Great is your name. Come on, lift your voice. You can do better than that. He's worthy of more. Come on, lift your voice. The heavens declare. They declare that you're glorious, glorious, and great is your fame on the earth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Do you love him this morning? Can you give him a shout of praise in the house today? Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. We will dismiss our children's church at this at this time and let them go and hallelujah be ministered to today. Hallelujah. I want to take just a moment. Um, I love to see our young people doing good in life and doing good out in in the world and things and I um, and being a minister and being taking the opportunity to to do good and and uh, I want to congratulate some folks. I want to congratulate Madison. Raise your hand over here. They won their big softball tournament. This came in first and everything this week or last week. Or, um, Parker, Parker Clark and Eddie were on the archery team that won third place at state this, this week. And so we're excited about that. And I don't see her in the crowd this morning, but uh, Kaylee, uh, Kaylee Latch won first place in state championship in weightlifting. So uh, not only did she win first place in the state championship, she's now the head security of the church. So, uh, so but, uh, proud of you guys, proud of all of our young people who are, whether you, whether you win a game or whether you, whatever it is you do, you represent Christ out in the world, and we're proud of you. All of you young people, we aren't we? Come on, can we give the, our, all of our young people a, a round? Amen. Because you are, whether you realize it or not, you're a champion in God's eyes and you're a champion in our eyes. We're thankful for you. Amen. Amen. First John chapter 5, verses 14 through 15 today. We're going to continue talking about types of prayers. And uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about two today. Thank you for allowing the, the Spirit of God, the presence of God to move in the house this morning. I know there's not, we've got a lot of folks out it looks like today, uh, com especially compared to the last couple of weeks, but uh, it's good to have you here this morning. Main thing is, is that He is here, amen? Amen. So, thank you, though, for, for just flowing in the Holy Spirit this morning. 1 John, 1 John, 1 John chapter 5. Verses 14 and 15. This is the confidence that we have toward him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that he, we have asked of him. This is the confidence that we have toward him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. God, I need it. I need your forgiveness where I failed you. I need your help. I need your hand to walk me through today Lord I thank you for all that you have done you are the Lord we did not make you Lord you are the Lord and God I thank you today for being the Lord of my life as I surrender to you and I surrender everything that you would speak to your people even me today God speak to us as a body today that we would be convicted in our hearts and draw closer and nearer to you each and every moment of every day that we are given in our time on this planet, Lord. We love you and we praise you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So last week we began discussing the topic of prayer and focused on the types of prayer. And we're going to go back in that today and talk about the types of prayers prayed in the Bible. And last week we talked about uh, prayers of intercession or that is intervening or praying on behalf of others. And, and then we talked about the prayer of supplication 
which is an earnest or a sincere prayer, uh, a humble request, in other words. And John <clears throat> reminds us in this latter part of this letter to all believers that the confidence that we have in our life with Christ belongs not only in the future time of His coming and of judgment, but also in the present and especially in our fellowship of prayer. We know that we have access to Him. We have a confidence that we have access, that He hears us. Amen? And hearing does not mean simply to be listened to, but to be heard favorably. Amen? You, you ever ask your kids, are you listening to me? Hello? Yeah? Why didn't you do what I told you to do? Because you weren't listening. You did not hear me. You heard my words, right? You listened to my words, but you did not hear what I told you to do. Amen? Does that make sense? So hearing, it does not simply mean to be listened to, but heard favorably. And the expectation is, of course, linked to, qual to the qualifying clause if we ask according to his will. Now watch this. It is not any prayer that is answered. As we said last week, we talked about prideful prayers and prayers that were of, for things that might draw us away from him. Amen. But it's prayers, and it is, it's not those prayers, but it's prayers that are prayed in confidence of who he is and what his word has told us to pray for. Hello? Prayer, it's the disciple who is in fellowship with the Father, who asks in Jesus' name, who remains in him, and who obeys his commands. What are his commands? To love him with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves, right? So, and, and feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and, and all of those things listed in Matthew 25, right? So in other words, asking according to his will doesn't mean that you have to wait to find out what the will of God is. If you read the word of God, you know the will of God. Hello? So it's, it's asking with confidence in who he is and what you are asking for is not a self-motivated or some silly request. Again, it's not from a state of pride and it's not for something that is going to pull you away from his presence. It's, it's, it's more I need over I want. Amen? Amen? Because Jesus told the man who asked him to heal his son, Lord, if you're willing, what did Jesus say? I am. I am willing. Amen? Why? Well, why, why was it his will to heal the boy? Well, because the boy needed help. And the father asked for his son to be helped. With humility, he earnestly asked. It was a love request, amen? And you know what? Jesus was the only answer. And so as we said last week, God will not answer these prideful prayers and the prayers that, that pull you away. And he's going to answer those that are seeking him, seeking his presence, seeking who he is as we seek the kingdom of God. Amen? Y'all all right? Y'all look very happy, very motivated this morning. We can go back to worship service if we need to, y'all. Amen. They were doing a great job. But I, I love to discuss the subject of prayer because I've seen prayer work in my own life. And I've experienced uh, a great closeness to God uh, many, many times as I'm praying. I've experienced the fear of God when my mom and her sisters are praying. Hallelujah. There's nothing like being in a prayer meeting and having the comfort of the church pew to crawl under. Amen. <laughs> but I'm, I am thankful for those prayers. I've seen a lot of their prayers answered. I've seen a lot of their prayers move mountains. Amen. I'm thankful for those prayers. And I love to, to, to study prayer and I love to, to preach on prayer and teach on prayer 
But I, until I began uh, studying for this series, I never really thought about the different types of prayers and, and, and just mainly focused more on the importance of praying. Amen? And, and so <clears throat> as we look at these, I, I do need to make a correction about something I said last week. I, I told you that I read there was 24 types of prayers that I found in this list. Some of those actually should probably be under subheadings and subtopics. Or, uh, and there, there's like minor differences in each one of them, and they're very close. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what I'm talking about. Uh, petitions are listed separately from supplications, but both are kind of similar in description. And most, like I said, most likely one should be under the subheading or a subtopic. But a prayer, watch this. We talked about a prayer of supplication last week, but let me go a little bit deeper. A prayer of supplication is to humbly and earnestly or sincerely ask for something. That is, pleading as if this answer is your only hope. Amen? We, we talked about Paul in Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verse 18. He said, Praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for the saints. Meaning to humbly ask and humbly and sincerely ask on behalf of himself and the saints. Amen? Watch this. Petitionary prayers are making a formal request to a greater authority with respect to a particular cause. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to this in a minute. Uh, or I'm going to straighten this out in a minute, but, but pay attention, pay close attention. As, <clears throat> this, is, this is how the, di uh, the dictionary defined this. As people moved west in the 1800s, they petitioned Congress for admission to the United States. They made a formal request. Okay? So Paul asking for supplications, prayers of supplications, is asking to be remembered in the prayers of the Ephesians. Humbly, earnestly, sincerely praying for Paul and, him, and, and the saints in a, in a general manner. Amen? And you notice he didn't, he didn't say pray specifically for this, but pray for us. Quiet because it's deep or, amen? Okay, good deal. So when we petition God with our prayers, we're praying more specifically. In other words, there is a specific need one is asking for. So a prayer of supplication is, Father, bless the young household and keep them safe on the path that you have prepared for them. And a petitionary prayer is, Father, Pastor Scotty needs direction for leading the church into a new building project. So, Father, help him and, and his board in their decision making. Help his board put up with him. Amen. <clears throat> so, I, I'm ignoring that one. Uh, see, these are very closely related, but there's a little difference in the semantics of these words. And so it brought this question up, is what, what's the importance of this? Is, is it that important to know the differences in these prayers? Uh, will God not answer my prayer because I prayed a supplicationary prayer when I should have prayed a petitionary prayer? Uh, well, thank God, He is full of grace and mercy and all-knowing and all-seeing. Amen. <laughs> so uh, thankfully for that. But this is important to understand when we are approaching and we, it teaches us how to approach his majesty and recognizing the prayers that we find in the word of God. There are some things which are good in general to ask for, but then there are some things that God wants us to be very specific about. Amen? Why? Why? Because when we open up and we begin to open up our heart and we begin to open up our mind and our thought, we're showing that our faith is in his ability to answer this one thing. Amen? The board and I do need direction for the building. We do want to make godly decisions based on guidance from the Holy Spirit because we are in charge of the funds of the kingdom of God. 
And we don't want to misuse or abuse any, uh, even a penny of God's money. Amen? So you see the importance of me asking for you and petitioning you to put a petition before the Lord on our behalf. Amen? So <clears throat> let, me, let me just lay it out for you like this. The difference between a general prayer and a specific prayer. If you have stage 4 cancer in your lungs, would you rather have someone praying for you generally or specifically? Amen? I want somebody who can pray that stuff out of me. Amen? So that's, that's really the difference between supplicationary prayers and, and petitionary prayers. I'm not really sure supplicationary is the right word. But it works for this moment. Amen. So that's the difference between supplication and petition. All right? General and specific. Get that? So there's one more type of prayer that I want to bring to you today. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. Uh, and, and focus on this a little bit more. <clears throat> Is the prayer of lament. The prayer of lament. And uh, not a lot of people like to talk about lament because it involves a lot of times sadness and frustrations and anxieties and fears and, and things. But it must be important to God because there's a whole book of lamentations. And that's what those are is uh, Jeremiah and some others lamenting over the state of Israel. So... It's, it's an important part of the Bible. It's an important part of the life of a believer, lamenting, because it is part of our life. Amen? And uh, FocusOnTheFamily.com says this about it. God wants us to bring our fears, doubts, and our despair to Him. Look what He says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. Peter said, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, all your cares on him, because he cares for you. Do you understand? Lament is defined as a passionate expression of grief or sorrow from a humbled state. It is an expression of regret or disappointment or a complaint. And if you remember uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, it says, For fear involves torment. When we have these anxieties, when we have these fears, when we have these frustrations, it is tormenting. And the enemy knows that. He likes to use that. He likes to break us with all of these things that we, we struggle over in our minds and we struggle with and this is going to happen and that's going to happen. If, if something don't change, all of these things. And, and fear involves torment and therefore our fears create anxiety and anxiety leads to many sorrows and these anxieties can even lead to a declining of our faith. Our trust that God is going to move. That God will move on our behalf. Amen? You ever been to that place where you thought, man, God's done give up on me. Come on. He's not answering. He's not moving. I, I just don't feel what I used to feel. Amen? Come on. Any real, real people here? Amen? It's happened. It happens to the best of us. It happens to all of us. Uh, and so what, what we need to understand is how important the prayer of lament is in our life. It's a bringing, a pouring out of our fears, our anxieties, all of these things. Why? Because He cares for us. Amen? Why pray prayers? Well, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus himself says, Come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden. And what? I will give you rest. Right. Amen? Come to me with all of that stuff. Bring it all, pour it all out on me. 
We didn't realize it at the time that he was saying this to them in the, in the, when he said it with his words. Amen. This is written down. We hear it from a written down state. But they didn't realize it at the time that what he was going to do was carry everything. Because he can carry everything. Because he is God. And he created. And he is able to overcome. Amen. And Jesus in, to labor in this context means those who are carrying burdens of fears, frustrations, and anxieties, laboring with life. Again, Peter said to cast all of this. Jesus said to bring all of this and lay it at his feet. Why? Because he cares. Because he cares. Do you think, do you think, do you honestly think that he brought you this far to leave you? As the old song says, he didn't bring us this far to leave us. He didn't teach us how to swim to let us drown. Amen? He didn't teach us all of these things to walk away. He didn't love us one minute and then decide, nah, done. Amen? He, he, didn't, he didn't stop loving us because he didn't like the shirt you put on yesterday. He, he didn't stop loving you because you let something slip out of your mouth that you shouldn't have let. Hello? Come on. God loves us. He wants to walk with us. He wants to, he wants to bring chastisement to us so that we can get those things correct. Amen? It's not that we should live there, but he doesn't stop loving us because we make mistakes. Thank God he knows us. Amen? But these fears, these anxieties, and these frustrations, when we bring them to the Lord, he hears us. I want to show you what I'm talking about. I'm fixing to get real deep, real personal in myself, okay? Fixing to throw some things at you that, that maybe... Uh, you may not be ready for, but you're going to get it anyway. Amen? It don't cost you any extra. But I, I, a couple of Wednesday nights ago, I had to confess this in our Wednesday night class, so mid-rangers, you, you get a double portion. Amen? But I came in uh, Tuesday night uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I, I got down on my knees on that row right there and just began to pray a prayer of lament and I had to realize, being a man, <clears throat> I like to bottle things up and not let anybody see the, the tears and the snot and the, all of that. Uh, I like to bottle up my emotions because <clears throat> where I grew up, <clears throat> men who cry are weak, but this Tuesday is the birthday of our son that walks on the streets of gold. And April and May are very tough months in the young household because we went for a five-week period from the time he was born until the time he left this walk of life. And I came in a couple of weeks ago and I got down on my knees and just began to confess to God that the thoughts of losing one of my other children has become so strong and so burdensome that I can't carry this anymore. And I just began to pour out my vial of who I am. I began to confess my weakness of my fear and because it, it's waking me up in the middle of the night and gotten me to the point that I'll go check to make sure they're okay. I'll go and check on my... On, on my kids and make sure they're, they're all right. I'll, I'll make sure Rachel's breathing and, uh, and, and make, you know, make sure she's all right. And, and it's gotten to a point at one point that it was even testing my faith if God was even really hearing. Have I messed up so much that God has forgotten? Have I done so much? Because I hear all of these other testimonies of people and and healings and miracles and I'm thinking God what 
what is going, what did I do, what, what's happened, and with all that is going on in this world with child abductions and people not paying on the attention on the roadways because we can't put our phones down long enough to drive 30 minutes, and or, or all kind of other things in this world which cause harm, it has bombarded me with all kind of constant feelings of not being able to control life situations. Hello? You know, because turn your back for one second, one of your kids comes flying through the ceiling. <clears throat> for those of you who are new here, that was my oldest son, right there, landed right there. Thank God he jumped up and said, Oh, I wish I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> yeah, we do too. He got a free helicopter ride to Memphis that day. But he walked out of the hospital that evening. But I built up a lot of fear and anxiety and frustrations from the what ifs. That it just seemed like my trust and my, my faith in, in God's love and protection had almost seemed faded. I'm just being real with you today. Okay? You can think of me whatever you want to think of me, but I'm just being real. When I began to pour out my prayer of lament upon him and confessing my weaknesses, I began to feel his loving arms wrap around me and assure me that he is still here. You see, I still have no clue about what tomorrow holds, but I do know that he will be there. And I do know that he will help me and help my family and help my wife face whatever we have to face. And I do know that he hears my heart screaming out to him, though my face may be smiling and laughing. And I can smile and laugh because I, I do know that he is hearing me. He heard my lament. And I am secured in the knowledge of his present help and that he has given me a comforter to walk with me. Amen. And this is all the more reason to go back to what we talked about last week and what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, 18 about praying in the Spirit always with all prayers. As I began pouring out my fears, as I began to lament all of my frustrations upon the Lord, the Holy Spirit began to come in and pray through me even harder and even stronger to the point that when I, I, I sat down on this step right here, and almost fell asleep because I got to a point where I was at so much peace because his presence had shown up in my lament. Amen? It's all to him. Bring all your cares because he cares for you. You know what we try to do? We try to fix so much of our own problems. We try to just say, I, I can't be feeling this way. I can't accept that, that I'm weak in this area. But I'm going to tell you, friends, the moment that you begin to, to, to understand your weaknesses is when you really, truly begin to understand his strengths. This is, it's not just a suggestion for living a peaceful life. It is a standard for living and walking by faith. Walking by faith and not by sight. Because in my sight, I, have, I, hear, I hear all of these screams and cries. And I see all of these car crashes. And I see all of these things that torment me. Because fear brings torment. But love says, that same scripture says, But love casts out all fear. Not a fear. Not even some fear, but love casts out all fear. Friends, we can't control everything in this life. And this is why Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 27, who can add an hour to their life by worrying? Who can add a second to their life by worrying about things? No one. 
But he makes this statement right in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount when he's talking about people needing, uh, that God clothes the the grass and the, the flowers and feeds the birds and he does all of those things and they don't even hold nothing compared to you. Because God loves you because you are created in his image and in his likeness and with your words you can praise him and honor him and love him amen he cares for you more more and it's not that plants and animals are not important to God it's just they were not designed in his image and the psalmist in psalm 34 18 and 19 says the lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of a few of them. Come on. He delivers them out of them all. Let me assure you today, Prayers of lament are not prayers that show a weak faith or a lack of faith or a lack of trust. They are prayers you better believe and better know that prayers of lament are prayers of great faith and great trust and great concern. Do you think that I came in here and poured out my heart to the Lord because I lacked faith in Him? I know it seemed like I was talking about I was fading and all of that things, but I knew that if I could just get to where he was. Hebrews eleven six says, Without faith it is impossible to please him. Because whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. I came to the church and I got on my face before him because I have faith in him. Because I've seen him deliver before. I've seen him move before. I've experienced his goodness before. And I knew if I could just pour out my vial. I could just pour my heart out that he was going to hear me. I'm not, worth, I'm not worth much to anybody in this world. I'm not worth much to, to this world's spectrum and all the things that this world holds. But I can tell you this. The one who holds the world finds me a son and finds me worthy under the blood of Christ. Amen? And I, I tell you today, he is my only hope for protecting my children when I can't be with them. The blood of Christ, I, I plead the blood of Christ over them every day because there are, as my, my mother-in-law and I were talking, there's witches, there's demons, there's people all over this world trying to destroy our young people each and every moment of each and every day. But I want to tell you something, there is a blood that they cannot penetrate because it is the blood of the lamb, the spotless lamb, and I'm telling you, you better be praying over your children. Because even when I, even when I'm not with them, and even when I am with them, I can't control everybody else in this world. I can't control the actions. I can't control the happenings. Therefore, I have to trust Him, and I have to trust in the blood. Amen. The prayers of lament are not prayers lacking faith. They are prayers of faith. I'm going to tell you today. I don't know what's burdening you. I don't know what's coming against you in your life. But I'm telling you, God is calling his people of repentance. To a place of repentance and a place of just trusting him again. We have gotten so far gone with trying to fix everything in our lives. With trying to do good and be good enough for this click and that click to fit in this church or that church, to fit in here so I'll do this and do that. But I'm telling you today, God is just wanting us to pour ourselves out. I've used this description. Will you throw me that bottle, please? I've used just a bottle. That's fine. Not this one. I wanted that. I'm kidding. God, I've used this description and this, this before. When this bottle is full... You can't put anything else in it. You might put a drop or two in it, but if it's full, you're not going to put very much in it. 
But when you pour it out, guess what? It can be filled back up. It can be filled back up. If we don't pour out ourselves, if we don't pour out our fears before the Lord, you think God thinks you're weak because you have fears? Hello? Let me just remind you of something. We're all weak compared to Him. Amen? Every bit of our flesh is weak because, be, compared to Him. God doesn't think you're weak. When you trust Him enough to pour out your spirit or you, and pour out your heart before Him, that is the greatest faith that you can show to God because you're saying, I can't do this on my own. I can't handle this on my own. It's tormenting me, Father. And guess what? The Father shows up in His Spirit, in His, in His way, in His power, and in His glory. And just like I try to do with my kids, I try to protect them at every step that they make. But guess what? I can't do what He can do. And when I trust Him, when I believe in Him, when I put my focus on Him, and I pour out, I pour out my lament upon Him. Man, there is nothing like that. His presence shows up so strong. So I'm here to tell you today, I know many of you are dealing with fears and frustrations and concerns, even doubts about things in your life today. I know that some of you may have on a, a brave face, but grieving inside and uncertain of situations and outcomes. But let me assure you today, God is still God, and He still cares for you. He wants to hear your fears. He wants to hear your concerns. He wants to hear your lament because He wants to be real with you, and He wants you to be real with Him. He wants to hear that He is your only hope. Why? Because He wants to show you His strength. He wants to show you His strength. When you pour yourself out, he will pour himself in. Amen. Will you stand? He desires to be your first choice, not our last resort. Hello? He desires to be our first choice, not our last resort. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day. God, I just thank you so much that even in my failures and even in my faults, God, you still walk with me and still talk, still help me and lead me and guide me and teach me, Lord. I welcome your conviction. I welcome your chastisement because, God, every time I fall and obey to your will, Lord, I become more and more like you. And I want to walk with you and walk like you and be an image of you to this world, Lord. I thank you right now, and I bless you in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray right now, Father, for every individual in this room that might be facing some kind of fear and some kind of anxiety in their life this morning, Lord, that they would lay their petitions before you and pour their lament out upon you today, God. Because you took it. You took all of our grief, all of our shame, all of our sin and all of our sickness to the cross. You bore it all so that we could be with you and we could have confidence in who you are. I thank you this morning. Thank you. I love you. I praise you right now in Jesus' name. This is the confidence that we have him, toward him. That we ask anything according to his will. He hears us. If we know that He hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of Him. Today, I'm going to ask you, as they begin to sing, to come this morning and just pour out your vial. Just pour out your fears. Pour out all of these things, all of these torments that the enemy is trying to torment you with. Because by faith, he will answer your request.
by faith. Your faith in pouring out yourself to Him. So will you come this morning as they begin to sing, will you come and just lay it before God and say, Father, I trust in you. I trust in your will. I trust in your word. I trust, I trust, I trust. Come. Please come. As they sing. He is my faithful father Calling me out of the dark away what he said in the light he is my firm foundation my anchor won't be moved storms may collide but my soul is on fire with his word
darkness he has never lost a battle we have confidence today that he has never never lost he has never lost the enemy has tried and tried and tried and will continue to try but there's coming a day when he will be put in his place for eternity amen telling you we have confidence today we believe today we know today that we can cast all of our cares upon the one who cares for us and we can know that he hears us we can know that he hears us today come on one more time when you lift your hands sing sing that chorus one more time and just when lift your hands and thank him thank him that he has heard you today Thank Him that He is fighting the battles for you. Thank Him that He has delivered you and Jesus continues to deliver you today. Come on, thank you for breaking the curse today, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift it up and let's sing it one more time. Broken that curse today. You don't have to fear. You don't have to worry. He has broken that curse. Who is the mountain that comes against you? Oh, he has defeated the darkness. Come on, one more time. Let's lift up our voices and sing it out. Glory to his name. Listen to the sound. love you father for hearing us thank you that Lord it, it, you just said a mustard seed you just said a mustard seed of faith would move a mountain so who is this great mountain who is this great mountain that would try to stop the God who created it we thank you today that we can call on you and know that you are hearing us we thank you that there is no weapon that can be formed against us that can prosper because at your name, at the blood of Jesus Christ, every knee bows and every tongue confesses today. Oh, Lord, we love you. Thank you for your presence in this house this morning. Thank you for delivering us from the fears. Thank you for delivering us from the anxieties today. All of these things that we've tried so hard to carry ourselves. Lord, you have brought deliverance. Lord, as we lament and pour our hearts out to you today, earnestly seeking you as the only answer, we know today that we have victory. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Do you have victory this morning? Do you know that you have victory this morning? Come on. There's two ways to live life. There's two ways to live life. You can live as one who walks in victory, or you can live as one who is a victim. I want to walk as one who has the victory. Amen? Come on. I don't want to throw pity parties. I don't want to be looked down upon. I don't want to look, don't worry about what the world thinks and all of its societies. I want to know that I have the victory in Jesus and in the power of the blood that, that washes away every stain, every sin, every guilt, all of that, and know and have confidence that he hears my prayers. Amen. Give him a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to be, we're going to honor these who are still in the altar, but we're going to be dismissed. And please remember Wednesday night services, eating at 6.15 and then service at 7. So be here 
Wednesday nights, but please allow these to continue to pour out their hearts before the Lord and do what God is calling them to do. Amen. So just be quietly dismissed. And I love you. God bless you. You can be dismissed in Jesus' name this morning. One